I would like to start our discussion of public speaking with a scenario. And it's, it's a very common scenario. It's one that's probably happening right now, multiple places uh, around the globe. And that's the weekly office meeting. OK, so here's a scenario. Let's say you need to provide an update on your project. And your project's OK, but it's, it's kind of late. It's a little over budget. And, but you still want to look good. And you want to main maintain your respect that you have in the office. And so in preparing your talk, you're operating within some broad genre constraints. Yeah, you should probably keep it under five minutes. You need to address some of the key office concerns. Now, let's say your specific office has developed a couple of unique expectations. So uh, in doing these, it turns out most of the people stand at the podium rather than walk around the room. Uh, that room itself probably shapes some of the opportunities. Let's say the lighting's really bad on one side or one corner for some reason smells and has an odd stain. Uh, but, the, but the takeaway is the presentation exists within a matrix of expectations and opportunities. And some of these are big uh, and small influences. Some of these you can influence, and some of these are beyond your control. But all of them affect the speech and your audience's expectations. So you know, let's say you send an email around the night before with your notes for the presentation. So then maybe you don't have to use a PowerPoint because you've, you've done something that affected the actual situation itself. Uh, some of these constraints, maybe you reject altogether. You don't want to speak at the podium. You want to walk around the room. And you know, what is that, that may not negatively impact your presentation. Um, but of course, a lot of these expectations change over time. So let's say at this hypothetical office, presentations are very different now than they were five years ago or 10 years ago. And these expectations are even made more complicated by how they exist in different places. So these standard weekly office meetings are very different in Tokyo than they are in Riyadh or in Caracas. Um, so what we're talking about here is how a speaker exists within a relationship of a number of sociocultural factors. And an old way of looking at this in rhetorical studies is the rhetorical situation. So we talk about what are some of those constraints on the speaker and on the speech. Well, certainly there's the topic. Right? What can be said or should be said about that particular topic, that speech topic? The specific audience, what are their expectations for that type of presentation? The occasion itself, that very norm of a business office meeting. Uh, the setting, what's the room set up like? The speaker's credibility. So let's say, for example, you kind of got caught in a uh, exaggeration last time you spoke. And so now you kind of got to negotiate that. People are expecting that. So that's an expectation about you that you need to work with or against. And all of these factors, topic, setting, audience, all of these are shifting and flexible. Some you can bend, some you can break, some you simply must adapt to. So why go into all of this? For this very simple reason, and it's something I, I expect you already know, but it bears repeating. There is no single form of successful speaking. There is no single form of successful speaking. There's no Esperanto of public speaking, something that holds across all cultures. It doesn't exist. So in the design of this class, this introduction to public speaking class, we have to make decisions about what to focus on. So we can't simply, I can't simply teach to the one form of speech that works across all genres for all speakers and all cultures across all time. It doesn't exist. That, that's a dream, man. That's not out there. It doesn't exist. And on the other side of the coin, we can't look at each and every type of speech that has been successful in all genres and each successful speaker and all the different modes of cultural speaking across all time. That would take a bajillion years. It's impossible. So what we're going to be doing in this class, and the reason I start with this is to get us all on the same page, is we're going to be looking at skills rather than genres. We're going to be looking at skills that you can adapt to the speaking situations that you find yourself in. Because I don't know what sort of speaking situation you're going to be in tomorrow or next week, and quite honestly, you probably don't either. But we can work on a core set of skills. And in that way, the goal of this class isn't for you to just do a good speech. It is for you to become a good speaker. And that may sound like a minor difference, but it is a, it's a pretty big one. And I think maybe one way of looking at this is through a sports analogy. 
So growing up, my sport was skiing, downhill skiing, uh, although you could apply this to a number of different sports. So uh, in skiing, you had to have a set of core skills. You had to have muscle memory, you had to have strength in your legs, you had to have experience with navigating these two sticks on snow. Uh, but you also had to be able to take that knowledge and apply it to the unique constraints, the unique setting that you were on. That given run on that given day required that you deploy those skills in a particular way. Maybe it's extra cold. Maybe you're a little bit sick. You had to pick your line on the run. Let's say it's snowing really heavy, so you've got limited visibility. It's about bringing those skills to adaptation in that specific space. We could look at this in soccer or football, right? So. The good player is not simply someone who can dribble the ball well. right? They have to be able to respond dynamically to all the things that are going on around them, making good judgments, performing good plays. They don't just march down the field dribbling the ball. They'll get it taken away and they'll look foolish. But so it's really about being able to take that core skill and adapt to these situations. And that's what we're going to be doing with public speaking. Looking at a couple of key skills, but then saying, you need to develop the capacity, the judgment, to adapt these skills to the speech situation that you're in. So what then are these core skills? Well, very briefly, and we'll go into these in depth in the next lecture. But very briefly, these key skills are designing clear presentations and delivering them in an engaging way. So where would these core skills be useful? Well, I would say probably most places, most speeches. These are certainly going to be useful skills in business presentations or class presentations or, or briefings or fundraising speeches or awareness campaigns, where you have to be clear about either information or persuasion, where you have to be on point, you have to be concise. Now, these core skills may not be as useful in eulogies, right? That's, that's a different thing. That's a different, you don't, you know, clarity is not perhaps the most important thing there. It's recognizing the emotionality of the space. And if you even think about it, eulogies are so culturally specific, right? They're embedded in the context of the region and the religion and all these issues. So, you know, eulogies are a separate genre, but these core skills are very usable in a number of different settings. So um, we're going to look at these skills, and, and uh, I'll speak more to this this week, but I'm emerging to this from a specific Western rhetorical tradition. And, and the idea is these skills, you take what is useful so that you might succeed in that next speaking situation. Because there are no hard and fast rules about public speaking apart from be honest and do what works. Um, so I want our discussion of these key skills to blossom into a global exchange about what works in different cultures uh, in our online discussion forums and other online spaces. So that's kind of this overview in the speaking situations. In the next lecture, we'll talk about what speeches and which speech assignments and speech skills you'll be working on specifically in this class.